Today we'll be installing the AirDog DF165 5G on this 2015 Power Stroke. This is going to work on 2011 to 2016 Fords. Part number on this particular kit is A7SABF489. We're going to start by unboxing and pulling out the instruction manual. You guys are going to want to open this up because the warranty card is enclosed as well as an AirDog sticker. Let's go ahead and set those to the side. Next we're going to have the AirDog wiring harness. We're going to have a section of black push lock hose. Then we're going to have the sub assembly box. We'll go ahead and open this up, pull the contents out of it. We have our hardware kit, return Y, bundle of zip ties, plastic spacer block, our fittings, customer service o-ring kit, and our cradle bracket. We have our sandwich plates. And the pump itself. Get this pulled out the plastic here. This is the 165 5G. You can see it has the diaphragm regulator on the side of the pump. Next we'll have our wiring harness. This is part number 5E-2-010-HD. Go ahead and open this up. You're going to see our weather pack relay. You're going to see our fuse holder. Fuse will already be pre-installed. Positive and negative battery terminal hookups. And our MetroPak 280 connector. This plugs into the pump. And then our fuse tab. This is where we're going to get power to trigger the relay and turn the pump on. We're going to start by removing a bolt on the firewall to mount the relay. Hooking up the positive and negative battery terminals. Kind of route these really nice, try to get them out of the way so they don't hit anything. And pull the lid off of the fuse box. We're going to want to find a key on ignition source. Find the fuse that is key on power and replace that fuse into the fuse tab and then reinstall it into the fuse box. You're going to want to make sure that the lid will close tightly. Sometimes you may have to do a little trimming on the lid. In this scenario we were able to just slide the lid right back over it. And you're going to want to take that long piece of wire with your MetroPak 280 connector, put that down the driver's side of the firewall keep it away from any moving parts like the steering shaft or the exhaust manifold. Zip tie all this really nice. And now we can jump under the truck and start removing the factory lift pump. First we're going to want to raise the truck into the air and then we're going to remove all of the electrical connectors off of the lift pump itself. And then there's going to be some bolts on the outside of the frame rail towards the outside of the truck. You're going to want to remove those. And the pump you can get it loose to access the last um, couple connectors. And then there's going to be some quick connect fittings that we need to release. Basically just pull the tabs backwards and those will snap off out of the way. Be careful with these. And we can get the pump out of here. Now it's time to mount your air dog lift pump. First we're going to install the fittings. It'll just be a lot easier to do them here on the bench rather than under the truck. They're an o-ring style fitting so you don't have to tighten these a lot guys. Just start them by hand until they stop. And then just give them a good little snug with a wrench. Now 
Now we can put our pump into the cradle bracket. It's a lot easier to do this if you just remove the filters. Set them off to the side. We're going to use our supplied hardware Allen head bolt to mount this to the cradle bracket. Give me four bolts. Make sure you use the washer supplied and nuts on the bottom. You guys can see how tight, of, tight it is with your hands. It would be really tricky to do this with the filters on, but it is possible. You can see the pump here will slide side to side in the cradle bracket. You're going to want to make sure you center it so that way the filters don't hit the cradle bracket. Get them tightened up and then we're going to dry fit with our sandwich plate on the frame rail to see how high we need to mount the cradle bracket onto the sandwich plate. In this scenario we're going to go on the lowest setting. So we're going to pre-install these four bolts into the sandwich plate. Use our spacer block flip it over on its back, it's going to be a lot easier to do it this way on a flat surface. Then take our cradle bracket, lay the pump over top of the four bolts, install the washers and locking nuts. You're going to want to verify that your pump is straight. You can tighten this and it will make the pump look a little crooked hanging on underneath the truck. So just verify that you have the pump straight before tightening the bolts in a crisscross pattern. We're going to go ahead and get these snugged up. Then we're going to take our two supplied bolts in the hardware bag, put these over the frame rail. This is going to be a really, really snug fit, guys. We're just going to loosely get this thing hanging here on the frame rail before we start to make our connections. You can see how tight it is. May, may help to have a second set of hands here. Start your washers and nuts. and your single will go on the bottom, get all these good and snug, and then we just want to verify that we can get our fittings all snapped on before we tighten the pump to the frame rail. Looks like everything's going to fit. So we're going to go ahead and tighten it up. Okay guys, now it's time to install the fuel lines on the pump. There's a couple different ways that we can install the suction line. Uh, one option is going to be that we use the OEM suction line, and the second is that we that you use the provided fuel line in the Yerdog kit. We'll show you using the OEM suction line first. So it's as simple as it sounds, guys. Literally just snap it right on to the pump. And then using the provided line, this may be necessary depending on your cab configuration. You're going to have to cut the rubber line off of the metal line on the frame rail. You're going to have to slide our air dog hose over the barb and then install a half inch 90 degree quick connect fitting snapped onto the pump. In this scenario, we just use the OEM suction line. It fit perfect. It's going to be the same on the outlet line going to the engine. Just snap the factory line back in there, lock your tab, and you're good to go. And then we're going to install our return Y. So this is basically going to allow the air dog return to go back into the fuel tank. So you can see here we're tying the two returns together to start with, the one at the front to the engine, the one at the rear to the tank. And then we're going to measure for our air dog return line. So our air dog fuel needs to go back to the tank as well and that's what this is for. So we're going to lubricate the inside of this hose, install our 3 8 90 degree quick connect fitting, push that guy in, make sure to seat it all the way over the barbs, and then we will have to go under the truck and measure to verify our length. So you can see I snap it onto this fitting here. Now I'm just dryly going to measure how long I need to cut it so I can tie into that return Y. Get that guy cut, go back to the bench, lube the fitting up, install it. Can be quite difficult to push these fittings in guys, make sure you use lots of lubricant. And we're good to install this. So I'll snap it back onto the return fitting, 
snap it onto the return Y, and your fuel lines are all hooked up on your AirDog lift pump. Now we're going to be installing our AirDog fuel filters. We're going to use a little bit of motor oil, clean motor oil, just to put on the seal, verify we don't get any leaks. Hand tight these guys, and you're good to go. We're going to plug in our MetroPak 280 connector that we are, if you guys remember when we installed the harness, we fished that down the driver's side firewall. Zip tie this really good, keep it away from any hot or moving parts. You're going to be right by the drive shaft, guys. I'm just bundling it up here nice with some factory wiring. And now it is time to actually start the truck. So we're going to turn the key to the ignition on position, allow the pump to run until it changes tone and it's primed, and we're going to start the truck up. Right, guys so we're here in the truck after doing the installation and one of the first things that you guys want to verify obviously make sure you don't have any leaks or anything um, and then we want to verify that we don't have a check engine light or a water and fuel light on some of these trucks um, we really haven't narrowed it down to what years um, you may have to kind of trick the water and fuel light sensor by uh, basically uh, finishing the circuit in it and then taping it up with like dielectric grease or you can plug the factory sensor back in, remove it from the fuel pump and just kind of tape it out of the way. But you know, a lot of trucks may do that. And we've also seen some of these trucks, like this truck, for instance, is a 2015. We unplug the factory lift pump. We don't have a check engine light, but on certain years, you know, cap configuration, whether what year it is, if you unplug that, it may kind of throw, it may want to make the truck throw a check engine light because it doesn't see that that circuit's complete. So you may have to go in and run the power wire from the factory lift pump into our harness or you can even um, like we mentioned before just not even use our harness at all and just uh, splice a new connector onto the factory wiring so everything's looking good for us we don't have a check engine light or anything um, the truck's primed up good we don't have any leaks so we're just going to take it for a drive um, kind of get it up to speed a little bit and verify that we don't have any check engine lights come up or anything we also always um, recommend that you guys set your fuel pressure before you guys go for a drive. Um, have the engine idling and you know verify that your fuel pressure is correct. So we'll just drive the truck for a little bit, get it to warm up, and then uh, accelerate pretty quickly a couple times and verify we don't have any check engine lights and it'll be good to go. Oh. 